Hi guys, welcome to another Elementor video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignTechTips.com. Well, we've got a fun one for you today. We've got an animated underline effect. You can use it on titles. You can use it on pretty much anything you want there, that little blue line. You can even just throw it on the bottom of a module if you want to. If you look at the bottom of those modules, you've got that little animated line there. Great way of highlighting things on your site. Really easy to do. So let's get started. I'm going to go over to my additional CSS panel. Go down to your dashboard. I'm using the free Hello theme from Elementor. If you're using Elementor, I would recommend it as it's optimized for it. But most WordPress themes have somewhere you can add custom CSS. Check your documentation. Usually it'll be in appearance and under customize. If I click on that, that'll take us to this page here. There's my additional CSS at the bottom. That's what I'm going to use today. So you can see things in real time over here. I've got one open here. So I'm going to go ahead and close that one out. Great. Well, we're going to be using what they call pseudo element for this today. We're going to be using the pseudo element of after. So let's create a class name. If you've got anything in there, you can scoot it down or you can write this down after it. If you prefer, it doesn't make any difference. We'll give it a little title and a title is forward slash star star forward slash anything you write within the two stars there will not be read as code so it's a great place for notes and titles and i'm going to say underline hover great now let's invent a class name for it all class names have a dot or a period in front so there's a dot and i'm going to call mine m line for middle underline you can call yours what you want. It wants to be unique. It wants to mean something to you. Now we're going to be using, as I said, pseudo elements. So I need to put two colons there and the word after, A-F-T-E-R. Then we can open, close some curly brackets, tell it what we want it to do. Well, I need to put some content in there. So I'm going to say content, colon. I'm just going to put a couple of inverted commas in there to tell it there's suddenly going to be something there. And at the end of the inverted commas, you need to put a little semicolon. Always need to do that. If you don't, it won't read the next line of code. Okay. And this thing that we're going to create, which is basically our underline here, needs to be in absolute positioning so it stays where it is. So I'm going to say position, colon, absolute. And we did this recently, the Divi theme. Somebody asked us if we could do it with Elementor, and it's exactly the same thing. Now, where do I want it? Well, I'm going to put it on the bottom of whatever object that we want to put it on. So I'm going to say bottom, colon, zero. That's going to be right on the bottom of whatever element we apply it to. Now, I want mine to start animating out from the middle, as we saw in that example earlier. So I'm going to put it sort of left 50%. Left 50%. So it'll start from halfway across whatever element it's on. And I'll make, make it so you can see it in a minute. I'll give it a width, a height, and a color. So let's give it a width of 100%. I'm going to give it a height of 5 pixels. Height, colon, 5px. And I'll give it a background color. Dash color. I've got a hex code of blue. This blue here, I've got it saved. So let's just pop that in there. Now, because I already gave all of our modules here a class name of Uline when I was demonstrating it just now, that line's popped up there, which is absolutely fine. I'll show you exactly how to apply that class name. And once we've got it in here, you can apply it anywhere on your site you want to. But I'm sure you can see there's a bit of an issue there. Our line, we started it from halfway across the element, and it's 100% of the width of the element. So it's off to the right hand side there. So we can fix that by adding a little, another line of code there. So we'll just drop down one more. We're going to transform, colon translate or move. Right at the end of translate there, we can open surrounded brackets and tell it by how much. Well, I want it to come back to the left by negative 50%. And we have to do this if we're going to create that animation. So inside the round brackets there, I'm going to 
say negative 50%. There it is right there, right in the middle. Great, well, that's an underline. That's pretty boring. I mean, it works okay and everything. But we only want to see it on hover. And I want it to animate out from nothing to the full width when they hover over it. So I'm going to copy my class name here from the dot to the R of after. I'm going to drop down a couple. Now, just after the E of M line there, I'm going to put another colon and the word hover. No gaps there at all. Now we can open and close some curly brackets and create a hover state for it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this width. Oh, I'm going to copy it. In fact, control C to copy. I'm going to take this particular one down to zero. Just going to have a zero and it'll disappear like that. Now I'm going to paste my 100% in here width 100%. And as you can see, it's appearing when we hover over it. But although it's starting off as zero and going to 100%, because it's happening instantaneously, it's looking like it's just fading in there. So to create the actual animation itself, I need to give it a bit of a transition duration. So let's put a semicolon on here. We'll drop down one more. We're in the regular, not the hover state here. And we'll say transition, colon. I want it to work on the width. So I'm going to say width, and I'm going to make my 0 0.7 seconds, 700 milliseconds. I want it to ease both in and out there. So I'm going to try that. Now you can see it actually animating in and out, which is just the effect that I wanted. That's going to get people's eyeballs on things pretty quickly. which is just what you want. Okay, to apply this, I've got it applied already. Let's just change this class name. You don't need to do this. I'm going to do it. I'm going to put a U in there so it doesn't work on these so we can apply this to anything that you want. Great, and as you can see, it's no longer working. We need to publish our changes there to make them work. Once they're pub published, let's go back to our page. It's still got it. Let's refresh this. There we go. I'm going to hit the edit with Elementor. I've actually got an instance of it there also, so I'm going to close that one down. Okay, let's copy our little class name. I made an MU line here without the dot. Don't need the dot, just need the class name itself. M-U-L-I-N-E, -E, middle underline, my sort of shorthand for. Go back to this page. Anything that you want to apply it to, just go into the module you want to apply it to. Over in Advanced, you'll find Custom CSS IDs and Classes. Make sure you put it in the class name, not the ID, because it won't work. Just paste that new name in there. Now we've got that hover effect. And the same for a module. I'll do it separately with a heading, because you've got to jiggle it about a little bit for the heading. I'll show you exactly what to do. And again, another little module right here. Go in there if you want to apply it to it. Over in Advanced, CSS IDs. We'll paste in that class name. And it's working on that one. And of course, rinse and repeat for anything else you want that on. Let's just delete this heading module. In fact, let's delete this whole section and I'll start a new one. And we'll pop a heading in here. Let's go to the matrix. I'm going to drag a little heading over here. There it is right there. I'm going to leave it as it is. I'm going to make it that same color blue by hitting the color right there, pasting in the hex code. Fantastic. I do want it to be in the middle, but if we apply this to it right now, over in advanced CSS IDs and classes, we want a class name, then new line. And now when I hover over, we got that underline effect there, but A, it's too close to it. And B, it's way too wide. I don't want it half as wide as that. I just want it to stop basically where the text stopped there. Okay, well, to shift it a little bit down on the bottom, to move it down further from the bottom, still in the advance here, we can give it a bit of padding. Uncheck the chain unless you want to do all sides. Let's give it maybe 10 picks on the bottom and see what happens there. That's about right. 
but of course it's way too wide. Just so you see what's going on, I'm going to give it a little background color. That's right down here. Make it a crazy color so you can see it. So I'll click on the color to make it a red. See how wide it is there. I'm going to go back to my layout at the top here where we put the padding in. Width. I'm going to use a custom width. And as you can see, it's made it exactly the right size there. But we want this to be in the middle. Unless you want your title on the left hand side there. So to make it in the middle, I'm actually going to go to the column that it's sitting in right here. Edit column. Before I do that, I'll remove that background. Just hit the little clear. We still got our underline effect. Now, as I was saying, I'm going to go into the column now to centrally align this. In the layout, first tab here, we've got horizontal alignment. I'm going to center it. So we've got it in the middle now. And that's a way to make that line fit your text. And you can apply that to any heading anywhere on your site. Any element on your site. As you can see, any widget on your site. Let's just save this, make sure it's going to work. Preview changes. And we put it on our little tabs module here, as you can see. <laughs> That's going to get your eyeballs in it quickly. We put it on our heading. And we also added it to this module. Like I say, you can add it to anything you want by just giving it that class name. We just put it on that one. We haven't got it on these two. And that's a really eye-catching thing to have on your site. So I hope you've enjoyed this today. You found it useful. I'll put that code down for below for anybody that just wants to copy and paste. But I would recommend that you learn to write CSS a little bit. It's a great thing to learn. It really is. So once again, this has been Jamie with System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.